This is the State of Things from the American Tobacco Historic District. I'm Frank Stacio. It was a time when comics meant paper-thin booklets with drawings of superheroes, and Comic-Con gatherings were fans in elaborate costumes lining up to meet their favorite illustrators. But today's comics are multimedia experiences, and comic conventions offer opportunities to see the latest on the intersection of traditional comics with movies, music, e-books, and video games. More than 7,000 people are expected to gather in Durham this weekend for NC Comic-Con. One of the NC Comic-Con organizers is illustrator Tommy Lee Edwards, and he joins me now on The State of Things. Welcome back, Tommy. Good to have you here. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having us. Tommy, tell us about uh, NC Comic-Con and how it's changed over the years. Well, this will be our our third year downtown Durham, and uh, I think each year it's grown more and more, and so I think that, you know, uh, there's probably going to be much more than 7,000 people there. <laughs> we never know, and some of it's exciting and some of it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. There are small comic shows that happen like weekends, like throughout the state, little tiny, tiny things. Alan and I went to a small comic book. Uh, it's just, it's even hard to call it a show. It's, you know, it's in a small room about as big as this one, you know, about a half a dozen dealers who show up all the time for like four collectors who, who are the only people who are at this thing. And we literally looked at each other and said that we could do better. And so initially, that's what I decided to do. You know, one day, like Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon. I was like, yeah, sounds great, man. I was like, like, give me a year. And he was like, nah, we just do it like next month. Just put it on. And I was like, all right, yeah, yeah. 30 days sounds like plenty of time to put on a comic book convention. We did it in the Morrisville Outlet Mall, which is horrible, horrible holdover from the 80s, just dying, like. So we held it in in the stores in the mall because there's so many empty stores, not like in the hallways of the mall. We uh, threw the con together, charged like two bucks to get in, 75 bucks for dealer tables. We had like 500 people show up. And it was a, just absolutely amazing to us that we had 500 people show up at this outlet mall for the convention. That was the very first one. That was great. I was so happy. I'm like, that was in March. And I was like, let's do it again. Let's do a two day one. After the whole thing was over, everybody's like super tired and just like, man, I can't believe it or whatever. And Alan looks up and he's like, yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again this year. And we're like, oh. All right, man, and, and that was it. We did it twice that year, and that was the, the very first two NC Comic Cons. So it just kind of continued from there. We doubled our, our numbers each year, and uh, I'm gonna say uh, two years ago, I made Tommy a partner. I mean, he had, he had supported the convention in the store, never asking for anything. I think that I see my involvement in the North Carolina Comic Con as like a way to take my unique perspective as an industry professional um, and kind of craft what's what's the for me the perfect convention and it starts to get a little selfish it's about like uh, aspiring creators that's what it is like that's what they've geared it towards um, it's the kind of thing where like if I'd have had that show 10 years ago when I got started if I'd have been able to go to NC Comic Con my whole trajectory would have been different in writing because I, I would have like been able to figure stuff out earlier. I would say it is the biggest, most intimate con you could go to. You know, we're not New York Comic Con, maybe you haven't heard us, but our dedication to quality and to fan experience is like no other. Yeah, you have, you have to come to that con. You know, you're going to get something that you're not going to get anywhere else.
sing with the narrow. Yeah. What about the high res files on the flash drives from Carolina Theater? We don't have that, um, but I can get it. How many add We don't have to order. They, they, they actually need them like, now. They want to test it out tonight. Carolina Theater is asking where the flash drive is. Well, okay. What I'm gonna have I don't care. I'm gonna eat some bacon instead. I have the thing. So, uh, day one, yeah, I think everybody's kind of losing their mind, and they're just like, but the show is finally here. That's the main thing, is that uh, even though you're nervous, um, and you're tired, and you want everything to go well, you're like, at least there's a show. At least we're doing the show. It's finally here, you know? We've been waiting for it. Let's, let's sink or swim. I'm always worried about, I mean, it's basically just one thing, that people aren't going to show up. You know, uh, it hasn't changed from, like, the first convention... Until now, it's, uh, are people going to show up? For me, this year was a big leap as far as the size and scope of our organization. This year is the first year we really had just a, a big group of people that was dedicated to running things and running other people. I was particularly worried because it was my first year as a full-time employee. Um, previously, my job was to do like fun commercials for them. Joseph Axblood, here for the NC Comic Con. And maybe plan some parties and go out and drink and make sure everybody had a good time. And I've been told I excel at that. So I, that, that stuff I wasn't worried about. Um, but everything else was, uh, it, it's a very detail-oriented show, as any convention is. And so I was just concerned that all the, the, the stuff had been taken care of. I just kept thinking, what if I forgot something? Originally, Friday had a lot of panels, or, or at least five. I think there were five panels, four or five panels planned on Friday. And the closer we got to the show, the more we were like, man, this is our preview day. We only have from 3 p.m. till 8 p.m. And people are going to want to be on the show floor, but we do need some panel, some workshop, something that would draw people to that Friday. Because you couldn't buy a Friday ticket. You could only buy a weekend ticket, and the Friday got thrown in for that. So what is the draw to coming on Friday if you're not just a collector who wants to go through the books? And so then the, the idea came up that it would be Tommy Lee Edwards, Charlie Adler, and Gerard Way on stage. All right, so thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, we got something kind of special tonight, right? Uh-uh, no, nothing's going on. We're just going to hang out and talk for a little while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's us. Oh, sure. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Oh, great. Uh, oh, it's been a long day. We got, we got three guys backstage that you might have heard of. We got uh, Tommy Lee Edwards, Charlie Adler, and Gerard Way. And so that being the only panel for a Friday that you have bought a weekend ticket to, and people are lined up outside the door, that was the other thing. Like Even before this panel started, 
um, there were people just lined up on the sidewalk sitting there waiting like they were for Gerard all weekend. Um, so there's people lined up, so we're like, oh man, this really, that we gotta knock this one out. We're hoping it goes well. What we're gonna try to do tonight is we're gonna bring these guys out here and instead of doing a question and answer, we're just gonna let them talk. Just let them hang out, right? Right. 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 right? You guys good with them, right? I don't think they're good with it, man. You guys aren't good with it? No, I don't think they're good with it. Hey, uh, Tommy, Gerard, Charlie, I don't know if they're good with it. Well, So that's what people are going to remember is the end. You know, you, you can have a great day and you do something at the end. Everybody's talking about that at nine o'clock that night. Like, Ew, yeah, I don't know. And then they had that panel where nobody talked, you know. So it, we, that needed to go really well. That was our big one for Friday. Uh, but we felt really confident because we had Tommy. So we were like, Tommy, you know, you're in charge of leading this and making sure that the conversation keeps going and they have something to talk about and the crowd's engaged. Uh, I... Yeah, it wasn't until right before we went up there that I realized I had no idea what we were going to talk about. Uh, so yeah, I think we're going to we're going to dim the lights. We're going to bring these guys out, and uh, we're going to let them chat a little. That sounds great. <laughs> Thank you guys again so much for coming to the NC Comic Con 2015. Without further delay, here's Tommy Lee Edwards, Charlie Adler, and Drew. <laughs> Day two is the day. Day two, Saturday is the day that you've got to, that's the day you're going to get your biggest numbers. That's the day when everybody's going to be there. Uh, guest, uh, your, your, most of your big panels are that day. Let me hear from everybody here at North Carolina Comic Con. Are we having a great time today? That's what I'm talking about. Saturday was by far the most stressful day. And it scarred me for about a week where I would wake up and, and like in the morning and be like, the lines are the, ah, you know, and, and I talked to Gil and he was the same way. He was like, you wake up and you're just like, oh, we got to fix this. Something's going wrong. You know, uh, about a week of, of nightmares because it was also the first day that we were having Gerard and Charlie signing over at the 21C. Hi, how are you? This year, we had access to the 21C Museum Hotel, which is uh, uh, right across the street from the convention center. And we set that up as a separate signing area for Gerard Way and Charlie Adler. Uh, because of the limited space that we have here in the convention center, we knew that there were going to be lines. Uh, I was not really expecting that amount of people. Can I get everyone? Give me a big... Yeah, the signing was 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 massive because a, that was so the first time you get to see Gerard and Charlie is on Friday night, uh, but even that was a fraction of the people who wanted to see Charlie and Gerard. Those people are going to show up on Saturday. So on Saturday we've got a line um, outside the 21C of like 2,000 people, which is three times more than we thought were going to actually be there. Like lined up that morning. I mean, they were already out there ready to go from the good to go. And I mean, if you do the math, that's just not everybody's getting through that door. Oh, Saturday was horrible. It was just, <laughs> it was bad. There was a incredible line out there uh, that we had to, you know, probably a good hour, maybe two hours before, just let them know that it wasn't gonna happen. Um, and uh, there were some angry people. Yeah, Alan was taking it really hard when there were some people that weren't happy when he realized that not everyone was going to be able to make it through this line and see and meet Gerard, you know. And and he did, and everyone did the best they could. And that's all, you know, that's, 
and they worked really hard. And a lot of people don't quite understand how hard it really is, and they're not going to get it. But he was taking it really hard. Uh, there was one woman in particular that was just flipping out, and he had to have her removed by the cops. So, um, and I came in and could tell he was having a hard time, and I said, come here, I, I need to eat because I'm about to faint. Let's just go sit over in the bar. I'm going to get a sandwich. You get. Let's just have a drink. Chill out. And uh, we chilled out for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and, then, and then I realized, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be on a panel. And, you know, and then, we, you know, but, um, but we, I think we look out for each other, you know. Well, I wanted to do a party, and I was just like, I want to do something big on Saturday night. And so Tommy came to the table with the idea of the nerd prom. And then when, at first, yeah, Alan was not super into the idea. I don't think he thought it was going to do very well. Honestly, I, I did not have a lot of faith that that was going to, you know, translate to people showing up. Um, I sound like the worst pessimist. It's like, I don't think people are gonna show up to my convention. I don't think people are gonna show up to my party. And then once we had that in place, it was my job to put everything together. So DJs, lights, um, de decorations, volunteers, the entire thing, how long we're gonna have the place, uh, alcohol, all that stuff was on me. Oh yeah, I told him if it wasn't a success, he was fired. So then that night, when we get there, we're, we're setting everything up. People are blowing up balloons and they're hanging stuff and, they're, and the lights go over here and the guys are bringing in the kegs, they're bringing the video games, everything's like getting set up. I saw the DJs up on stage and the way it was decorated. I was like, this could be good, you know? Even if we only get 50 people in here, it's gonna be good. And then right at like 8 o'clock, it opens at 8.30, right at 8 o'clock, I look out the door and there's a line like up the block toward 21C. And I was like, ha, 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 oh, thank you, God. Brockton and Alan and, and Lissa and all these friends are texting me pictures and I'm like, oh my God, look at all these people. But when I got there, I saw everyone having so much fun, and not just all the fans and everybody, but the volunteers having fun, and you know, um, you know, Eric and Brockton and all of our families there having fun. My kids are out there dancing, and it was awesome. It was a, again, I felt like an outsider. I felt like I was someone who, who was just there, uh, watching this thing, just hit a home run, you know, it was it was great. And everybody's dancing, and the DJs are like spinning, and everybody's like laughing, and I'm looking at my friends, and they're drinking, and they're like, yeah! And I was just like, oh, thank you, thank you, because at that point, Saturday, the worst day, the, the scariest, most stressful day is over, the party is packed, people are drinking, laughing, dancing, having fun. It's a success! Yeah, it's like we did it, it was like it. This was the big one, we needed this one to work. Had to work. Like, the whole thing was like based on this idea. We're like, nobody's done this. The cosplay ball. It's a place to go. We shut down the street. We walk the floor. Everybody's safe. Everybody's been fed. Food trucks. It's like, we did it. That's the first time that I had felt a sense of relief since, for six months, since we really started planning the show, since it got to that halfway mark. That was the first like where I was like, okay, the show, we could have a, we could have a, a kind of a half ass Sunday and it still would have been an amazing show. Friday went great, Saturday went great. Our two biggest panels went amazing and the, the giant after party went off without a hitch. So yeah, I was like Sunday. What do you got, son? Huh? Hey, right. what's up? F***ing around texting each other because we refuse to talk to each other. I won't f***ing say a word to you. We're not talking right now. I'm trying to update Twitter. 
Uh, it's out of control. I had 11, that's 11,000, 11 K, right? I had 11,000 things to answer. Yeah. I can't do that. You can do it all you want. <laughs> I can't do it. You can make it, man. Believe a it. lot of them are things like, I saw Raptor Jesus drinking a beer, you know? And that's like, <laughs> it's just a picture that we got tagged in. So I'm like, uh, retweet. Yeah, that's good. That's all you can do. Retweet that in those instances. And anybody who says anything about us, block mother. <laughs> <laughs> The last day of the show is always a little bit of a relief and also sort of a, a bummer. Some of it is exciting because you're like, oh, yeah, I, I can just put this out of my mind for a little bit. But then it's also uh, kind of depressing, you know, because you're like, oh, man, we're almost done. I thought Sunday would be more of a like, I don't give a but when I woke up, I was pretty scared again. And because it was the, the signing thing, I w we wanted that to go well. And then we still had, you know, lots of great panels and stuff that I wanted people to be there for. Oh, the stress was definitely on. Uh, and, uh, you know, at the gala, uh, while, while that was a success, you know, I could not forget the signing. I, I just, you know, I, I just felt, you know, I was trying to figure out, one, what went wrong and how we could prevent it. Uh, Sunday, you know, because all those people are coming back. Thank you so much. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. So right now what we're doing is we are having our Gerard Wade and Charlie Adler signing. Um, this is day two of the signing, um, so we're trying to get people in right now um, as fast as possible. We have a process in hand with my henchmen to get them in 10 seconds, out the door, and go from there. That was my focus. Like, that's where I was. Out there, um, just making sure the line went well. Tommy came out there, which was super awesome, you know. Uh, he's talking about Gerard. He's going through the line, uh, signing the prints for everybody, and... Uh, I, I thought that was a great, great start to the day. And then by 3 p.m., we, we get every single person through the line. And we raised 16, a little over $16,000 for uh, Duke Children's Hospital. You guys have a good time, really nice. Thank you. But then at the end of Sunday, all of a sudden you realize it's like after you had a party and then you got to clean the house. Um, you're like, ah, oh, it, man. You know, like, uh, but now we gotta make sure that, you know, everyone's got their flights figured out. How's this guy getting to the airport? Have we covered this hotel? Have we, you know, is, has, has, looks like we might have up the floor there. What's that gonna cost us? You know, all this like stuff coming in, you know, and, and um, so, you know, it ends up being a late night for all of us. We started planning, uh, we started talking about next year. I wanna say literally, the next morning, I think I sent a text out to either Brockton or Tommy at like 3 a.m. Like, you know what I think we should do next year? It was like, we didn't even like, they took like no time off because um, they're workaholics. And so they, so we've had like, we've had, it's, what is it? Like January 9th or something. And we've had five to seven meetings already about the, the next show and gotten some stuff in place. Uh, just taking the stuff that we learned from this year and trying to do it better for the next year and um you know taking the things that didn't work quite as well and fixing them and taking the stuff that did work and if it ain't broken don't fix it we're just gonna do it again bigger better uh so to, to show mean to me means a lot of work and a lot of stress throughout the year this whole thing is about creating a weekend long experience that you can have a among, you know, it's sort of like with the gala, come as you are, you know? You can dress up, you can not. You can be into comics or you can just be into cosplay. You can be into movies or you can be into gaming, you know, whatever. Just have an awesome time and get to visit with other people that are like you. I mean, I think that there is, there, there's a photo on Twitter that they, that they just posted like a week ago it's of a girl with her wristband, her weekend wristband for NC Comic Con on, and she said, it's been 30 days, and I'm still wearing it. It was the best weekend of my life. 
that's why you do it. Right there, that picture is literally worth a thousand words. It is like, it made me feel so good. I was like, wow, that's like, she's still rocking that wristband like she went to her favorite concert. Like she just saw Aerosmith. I mean, it's obviously not Aerosmith. That's a kid, she doesn't even know what Aerosmith is. But, but yeah, so that's, I think that's why you do it, you to give, to give back to the comic book community. That's what Alan and Tommy have always wanted to do. That's the reason they put the show together and want to do it was to give back to the comic book community. And that's why this show is so different, I think. And, and it is such like an, an intimate and, and different feel to than any other show. And it's an honor just to be, you know, part of it, any small part of it. So to to have been asked to be a bigger part of it this year, that's like Obi-Wan Kenobi hand, you know. Okay lightsaber and being like, you know, are you gonna do this? And you're like, ah, you know, you're like, no, yeah, I'm totally gonna do this. I mean, I don't think there is an end goal. Um, I mean, the goal of the line is always moving. You know, once we're done with one show, we're already looking on to the next and the next and things like that. You know, we, we aren't just focused on getting through this year. I would say our goal is to create a lasting impact on our community. You know, if it's in the form of NC Comic Con or Oak City Comic Con or any of the other things we're doing within our community. When I'm leaving, like so like on Sunday night, um, I, I definitely felt like we all did a great job. You, you realize then what a high that you're running on the entire weekend. You know, good, bad, w whatever. Uh, yeah, it's just like, what happened? <laughs> what the f just happened? Uh, I gotta go home and go to work in the morning, you know, back to the store. It's so gradual. There's never like a moment where it's like, oh, we did it, you know? It's so kind of like, all right, we crossed that hurdle, here's another hurdle. It's more like a marathon. So leaving, I felt a sense of accomplishment, big time, but I wasn't quite sure if it was a success or not. I, I'm just, you're just partly waiting for the other shoe to drop on certain things. Every year, more and more on social media especially, you see these people on Twitter, you know, talking about these three days were the best days of my life. You know, I mean, that's so cool, man. You know, so that's like the, that to me is when I see that stuff is when I go, oh yeah, this is totally worth it, man. It's awesome. You know, that that's what really makes it worth it is seeing the uh, the fan reaction and um, and businesses be happy, retailers be happy, the, you know, hotels are happy, you know, everybody's, the food trucks are happy. You know, everybody's doing well. That's all we want is for everybody to do well and have a good time. You know, and then when they do, it's worth it for us, especially for me. All right, time with take two. I already messed up one take. You know, my main responsibilities for the convention are Organizing guests, um, you know, the film festival, uh, and answering phones. Alan is a uh, uh, son of a. <laughs> my my store, my company, and I are one. Just like that movie Excalibur, you know, King Arthur and the Land. I I I think about that a lot.